Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Upper Storage View Lab. It's been a little bit slow in our shipping receiving department, but uh, we do have a new box in from our friends over at Gigabyte, so we're excited to have something new to share with you. Now this guy is the r 181 2A0, and what this is is a 1U server designed to be for compute intensive environments. So it's going to have SATA bays on the front, but it's capable of supporting the high-end uh, Cascade Lake Intel CPUs, persistent memory, and all the other good stuff that comes along with that. So my normal box cutting device is downstairs, so we'll make do with the, the flat head today. And then we'll get after this thing and see what we've got. All right, we've got a box in a box, rail kit uh, uh, for the CPUs. So like most of these that we get uh, from Gigabyte, they're going to be usually bare, which is okay. We've got lots of parts around, presumably the heat sinks, low profile because it is a 1U server. And server and blue lovely blue baggy so we'll get this unwrapped and situated and come in a little closer to see what we have with this hardware as we take a closer look at the front of the system we can see that we've got 10 uh, two and a half inch bays these are all going to be SATA bays which for this purpose of this node as a high power compute node, uh, SATA is probably fine. It's not going to be a high performance storage node. Of course, there are PCIe expansion slots on the back. So what we'll probably do here or what we could do, there's a number of options. We could put a bunch of uh, SATA drives in here having a low cost uh, flash pool across the 10 bays. More likely than not, though, Kevin will opt, I'm sure, to put something in the PCIe expansion bay in the back, probably that Memblaze card we recently reviewed and have been working with a lot. And it's actually an interesting side note. That's a good spot for something like that Memblaze card, where we've got a system that's PCIe Gen 3 uh, that, that supports just the SATA in the front, so it's a good opportunity if you want some high capacity high throughput storage in this node, you can do that, you can do it on the backside with an edge card. I know edge cards have been uh, waning in popularity, but uh, this is a good use case for, for such a thing. If you want one of these uh, 1U lower cost servers, that's mostly for compute, but you can still get some storage in the backside. Now let's go ahead and flip this around, just take a look at the back. All right, you can see we've got uh, two redundant power supplies on the back side here, 1200 watt. We've got, uh, of course, monitor access, onboard gigabit and um, KVM access. And they've got support for a couple PCIe cards in addition to two of the open compute uh, MES cards. So there's pretty good flexibility from expansion and that's again one of the trade-offs that we see sometimes in these 1U servers. If it was full of NVMe drives, we'd lose the expansion slots on the back because they'd end up using uh, an NVMe uh, adapter card back there. So we've got SATA on the front. We can do uh, edge cards in the back. We'll probably look at putting in a high-speed NIC here. The 1G is not going to get it done for us in our testing. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll definitely put a Mellanox card in there and get... Uh, 2500 whatever Kevin throws at it let's go ahead and come on top of this we'll take the lid off and and see what's inside all right so let's get after this guy and see what's inside one of my favorite parts of getting at this server is that it uses not one not two but three different screws to secure the lid to the chassis so just in case you ever have a, a little bit of a screw fetish for lids on server chassis, this guy is for you. So let's go ahead and remove that. And 
All right, so we've got the 10 storage bays across the front with the uh, blue SATA cables tracing back. Looks like we've got eight fans in here. These little guys wiggle out and it's hooked on there, but this goes and connects to uh, a little back plane on the, the front. Uh, so they are replaceable relatively easily, but uh, you do have to get in there and and uh, get at these cables that are connected up front. Let me get rid of these shields. And so you can see we've got a two processor system. This supports uh, the new Intel Cascade Lake CPUs. So again, we've got a number of choices here. We could go with bronze or silver units here. If we've got a modest compute need uh, using the SATA drives, or like I said before, PCIe drives in the back, just a lot of flexibility. We could also put in high-end Intel Cascade Lake CPUs to the extent that the heat sinks and the power supports it on the board, whatever that high-end is, um, and be able to drive a little bit more I.O. from this system if it's connected to shared storage or in a cluster or whatever else. So as we keep going back, we've got uh, a little bit harder to see, but we've got the, uh, the two MES card slots for the OCP project and then the, uh, the risers for the PCIe cards and of course the power supplies in the back. So what we'll do now is I'll just step away and leave this bit of madness for Kevin and he'll come through and drop in some CPUs and RAM and a little bit of storage and then we'll get this thing racked back up and, and uh, fire it up and see what it can do. All right, so after we were done filming those initial videos, Kevin went ahead and outfitted the server. Uh, he's here now joining us with more information on that and a couple of the highlighted charts from the server's performance. So after we stopped last time, you went ahead and dropped in CPUs, RAM, and storage. How how'd you end up outfitting this thing? Yeah, so we used uh, the Intel 8280 uh, processor, which it's been our um, kind of the workhorse of the lab. Uh, it's a top-end uh, Intel offering, and in a dual-proc configuration, it gives a pretty good mix of uh, CPU megahertz and core count. Uh, and then on the RAM side, we used uh, 12 32-gigabyte DIMMs, uh, so those are 2933 megahertz DIMMs, not as fast as the AMD offering, but you're not going to see a huge difference for most workloads uh, in that area. But that gave us uh, 384 gigabytes of memory, and with uh, ES6i67, we had a pretty good offering for our... Uh, VMs. And on the storage side, we used a single uh, Memblaze edge card. Uh, so our uh, C926 uh, NVMe card, which had 6.4 terabytes of uh, capacity. And that's because the front uh, of this uh, server has SAS space, not so NVMe. Yeah, just, just SATA SAS. And now we're at the point where that's just not good enough in terms of high performance storage in a in a uh, 1U node like this. Yeah, so if we're looking at all flash these days, we're probably going to uh, lean towards NVMe storage. This guy with uh, SATA SAS is more of a value or mainstream play. And with that in mind, I mean, it's you can outfit, I think this particular platform, you can probably technically fit more resources in this thing that you might use. Um, so it's... It, it's a fun platform to play around with, but you need to kind of make sure that you're not going to overbuild it. Well, it, yeah, it works out really well as a compute node as part of a, a you know big cluster uh, from a uh, from an executing workload standpoint, where the storage may be somewhere else, and this thing might only need you know a couple of drives for boot and maybe a little bit for logging. So it, even a, a SATA or a SAS backplane is still okay uh, for use cases like that, especially around HPC and and some of the other popular ones. Um, so looking at, at what we saw, you pulled out a couple charts from the review that you liked. What what stands out here? Yeah, so in Sysbench, uh, we're not uh, pushing these CPUs to the max. It's more of a uh, metric of what the uh, underlying storage device was capable of. But we came in just under 12,000 transactions per second, which is pretty good. Um, I mean, it's not a uh, slouch by any means. Okay. And then we ran SQL Server as well. Yeah, so this area we came out with an average of uh, 2.25 milliseconds, and uh, the VMs measured between 1 and 3 milliseconds each. Okay, and then you snagged a couple synthetic charts. We've got uh, random ref 
uh, 4K here. Yeah, so, I mean, you're able to hit really low latency. This was uh, 700,000 IOPS at the max, and we're at uh, 180 microseconds. So, I mean, it, it's pretty good. <laughs> Considering we just have one drive in there. So Yeah. I mean, it's a good drive, but just one drive. And then 64K, what do you have? Yeah, this, uh, we came in at uh, right around 400 uh, microseconds and uh, just over 5 gigabytes per second. And this is kind of a limitation of what you're going to see from a um, uh, Bi-8 uh, edge card. So theoretical max from a PCI Gen 3 card at uh, six or 16 lanes is going to be around uh, 12 gig a second. Um, the uh, eight lanes will give you around uh, around six six point five. So I mean, you're looking at what the storage is capable of through that port. Sure. With that in mind, you're probably going to be you might be leveraging hundred gig Ethernet through the OCP uh, slots, or maybe you popped in some uh, thirty two gig fiber. But uh, this platform, it, it's it's going to run as well as what you can put inside of it. Or if you stacked up a dozen of these and went and hammered against some all flash storage array they'd make for some pretty good application servers. Oh, definitely. Okay. All right. Well, we've got the full review up uh, on storagereview.com with even more performance charts and uh, all sorts of uh, other goodies, photographs, everything else. So thanks for tuning in.